stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. All right, my guy, keep that focus up. Let's hear Prime's op er, poem again. Yep, even I can tell the girls are already ready to hear it once more. Especially Monica, yeah. Okay. My poem will be... An Invisible Date. Wait, what? Invisible what? Uh, hmm. Affections, friendships, and desires are the balances that have been harmonized. I had established unspoken rules without even realizing it. I can't use words to explain this strange feeling. It's like the unseen has become perceptible. And in this instance, I grasped your hand as you reached out to me. And just by feeling you, I was just supposed to be satisfied and content with what I've got. But my feelings went out for out of control. Because there's a desire that's asleep in my heart. Or no, that asleep. And it cries out for your name. An excessive measure of jealousy amounts and breaks the balance completely. Collapsing, never realizing I'm looking control or losing control now. Oh sorry. Loosing. Oh, I clicked. Crap. I don't want you getting worried over me. It's like I'm regretting every passing second. From the instance our connected hands were separated by fate. Just like what I wanted, just like I desired. Now it's time to change the harmony of our tale. From here on out starts the story of our life. Looking at you now, I was er, it was supposed to be enough with just that, and I'd be done with it. Don't think I don't see you there. But a desire that's awakening deep inside me burns bright and scares me so much. Just what's this feeling anyway? An ambiguous shadow? My other half? I don't care what fate has in store for me. A little bit more, can we please stay like this? Because once it'll start, it will disappear soon. Looking at you now. It was supposed to be enough for me. But it never was. Why is it never enough? Do I still long for your love now? Just by loving you? Our story had begun. With the weave of fate. Well, sorry, weaves of fate. Still pull us both apart. Please don't you forget about me and you, darling. Please don't leave me in the dark. You are the light of my life, and you complete me. So please, darling, find me. I finish my poem. I realize that everyone is quietly staring at me because of the poem I blurted out of the blue. Ah, uh, dude, that wasn't Prime's poem. What kind of poem was that? The last part, though. Find me? Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. That poem was the first one that came into mind. It, it, it was nice, Hallie. Come to think of it, Monica, that was a really good one. Yeah, it was. Great, right, yeah. Yeah, that. All right, moving on. <laughs> that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, gal, I'm going. Natsuki slowly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the po or podium. <laughs> uh, the, the poem is called... It's called... You know, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called For You. Natsuki takes a breath. The beatings of my heart won't stop. It's uncontrollable. Is this how I really love? Even when I do everything if it makes me crazy, I know you will ignore me. This simple girl who sees something different in you. But I can only offer a simple poem. I can't get enough of listening. You're a cold voice, though. You tend to babble a lot. That's why I loved you. Not picky and happiness. It's okay to be a little mad. Morning, afternoon, or even the nights. Just be happy all day long. As long as we're happy together always. I gave you my heart. Do keep it and take care of it. Hold on to the belief that I will not leave you. In joy and in sorrow, you'll always have a companion. I love you, darling. Natsuki looks at me as soon as she finishes her poem. She stammers a few gibberish words as she starts panicking for no reason. Dummy! There I'm done! Natsuki finally finishes and we applaud. She huffs back to her seat in a hurry, glaring at me for no reason. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say! Any word of this outside the club and I'll hit you with a knuckle sandwich! Natsuki says that as she glares at me. Oh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just... Again, she looks at me, clearly embarrassed with her choice of poem back there. 
Embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it'll be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? Sayori, mind helping me out what we could... Mind helping me out what we could design for the pamphlet? Okay, Monica! Well, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. The one I did was a bit too long. Well, that's up to your decision, Hallie. That poem you did was good, though. Uh, I, but I have a feeling you, or you'll do something better by then. Ah, thanks, Monica. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is still a long way for now, but let's try and write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nice so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning for it another time. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Dude! What? You and Monica. Outside. Now! Why? Stop asking and just do it. Eh, okay. I approach Monica, who seems to be closing some of the windows. Hey, Hallie, what's up? Er, uh, voices. Figured they wanted to t -t talk about it. It? Let's go somewhere we can talk with them about it. I suggest we go talk about it in the space room. Space room? It's the room I usually go to. Oh? Come on, let's go. Alright. Alright, everyone. Me and Hallie will have to talk something out of it. We'll be right back. Together, we went out of the club and headed to another part of the school I'm really unfamiliar with. Here we are. Where? Do you trust me, Hallie? Uh, yeah? Good. Where? Monica grabs my hand and pushes me into one of the rooms and... What the? What is this place? It's Monica's space room. Space room? She usually comes here alone. I've been here before already, though that was more or less the first time in the previous round, though. Okay, now we're here and no one to disturb us. I believe you have some experiment or explaining to do, Hallie. What is it? Hallie, that poem you recited. What about it? That wasn't Prime's poem at all. What? What was that poem you recited? Er. I expected you to recite Prime's poem. Not a really different one. Monica, the other's poems too. I know. Siri recited Asher's poem. Yuri recited Victor's poem. And Natsuki recited her poem for Natsu. Why were they reciting poems from our world? That's what I'm trying to figure out. But we can talk about the other's poems later. My concern right now is you, Hallie. Why did you recite that poem again? What? I recited that poem before already? Monica sighs. Guess I'll just cut to the chase with this. Back in the previous timeline, you confessed that you liked me. After that, I got quite distant from you after the whole incident with Mongol or Mongolius resurfacing. What? I didn't want to have anything that involved you because I got scared. You were persistent, though. Tried all you could just to talk to me, get my attention. I never batted an eye on you, nor paid any attention to you at all. Even when the others get, or got so worried, I didn't care entirely. That was when you made the, or that poem. Invisible date. You wrote that poem out of desperation and tried showing it to me. And... Monica just goes silent after that. And then what? I can't exactly say what happened afterwards, but I have this strong feeling that the poem wasn't the only thing that was created that very day. What do you mean? You don't mean... Look, we've been staying here for a good bit now. Monica dismisses both mine and Smart's question as she goes to head for the door. Let's go. The others are probably pro waiting for us still. Okay, I guess. I then walk over towards her as she then opens the door for us to leave. We then leave the really weird room and went back to the club. <sighs> One of the things that kind of really gets me about this mod is like, I can see what they're going for. Like, uh, they're trying to build intrigue with all these like mysterious elements and things, but something intriguing stories usually do 
is they'll provide some answers and some questions so that it's not just all questions all the time. It's not always so vague. It's not always confusing. And that's where this one kind of falls apart because it's the, the, the questions and mysteries are all front loaded and there's a ton of them. There, there have been so many comments and things they've made where it's just like, uh, that there's no frame of reference for what it is or, or they're not elaborating or they'll, they'll, they'll say like a little bit, like even just in the, the, the scene before this day where he was talking to them about Kurumi and they're like, well, they, they told us like one thing about Kurumi, but, uh, but then they, they didn't really follow through with it any further. They just thought that that like okay, we've we've defined our nature. That's all they need to know for now. But it's it's not. And there are questions that would be asked, but they're not. It, it, I'm just I guess it's just kind of bothering me as I'm talking about it. But anyway, we arrive and the rest of the girls seem to be waiting for us already. Okay, everyone, that concludes today's club meeting. Monica seems carefree now after our whole conversation in that room. All right, I'm heading out first. See you guys next time. Same here. See you all tomorrow. Oh, wait a second before you do leave. What is it, Monica? Yeah, what is it? You're all free. you're all free next Saturday, right? On the twenty second. What's up? I know what's on the day. You do? Uh mm huh. -hmm. That's Monica's birthday. Birthday? Yeah, it's my birthday next Saturday, and I was hoping to invite all of you on that day in advance. If you don't have any plans on said day, that is. Well, I don't really have anything else planned on the weekends. What about you, Sayori? I don't have any plans either. So I'm going as well. What about you, Yuri and Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki and Yuri think at the same time. Well, I don't really have anything else to do on the weekend as, er, weekends as well. So count me in too. That's great. What about you, Yuri? I can't really think right now what to do. N not that I don't want to go as well, but... but... Mind if I tell you my decision next week before the date? Ah, uh, it's okay, Yuri, and I understand that. My parents aren't home this month, but they're close friends with... They're close friends, the one who's going to sponsor for the party next week. He's a great guy, as a matter of fact. You always like him. Especially you, Natsuki. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Nothing, nothing. Anyway, that's all for today, everyone. All right. All right, Monica, thanks for inviting us. I'll head out now. Then I'll head out as well. At the same moment, Natsuki and Yuri make their way out of the club, leaving once again me, Sayori, and Monica alone. Ready to go home, Sayori? Sure thing, Ali. Monica, we'll be heading out now. Bye! Okay, okay, goodbye, you two. Bye as well, Monica. Together, me and Sayori make our way out of the school and towards home. On our way back home, Sayori seems to be quiet then. Quieter than she normally is. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, again with the usual spacing out. Um. Hmm. I was thinking about something from earlier. What is it? I like how we get to. What? I, I mean. Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day you want to ask to walk home with you. Hmm. What would you do? What kind of question is that? Monica asking me to walk home with her? Didn't that happen already? Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't ditch you for her, that's for sure. But Hallie, she's a great person. She's very influential as well. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. And besides, we already walked before last week, remember? I wouldn't just ruin that for you. Oh, right. I totally forgot about that, Hallie. You think it would be too much sometimes. But Monica would deserve she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. There are things just going around my head lately and I feel a little lightheaded. So you're sick? I could come over at your place and take care of you if you want. Could come over at my place? If it's okay, Allie. There's really nothing wrong with me today. You sure? Positive. Sayori shows an energistic smile. Uh, ener energetic? All right, but if something's not right, you call or you can call me, okay? Sure thing, Allie. The conversation trails off. I think of what Sayori could have mean by her getting lightheaded. Is she really sick and all? Maybe I should text her mom later to let her know something's up. Yeah, that would be best, man. Go. <laughs> A few more minutes of walking, we reached Sayori's house, and we wave each other goodbye. 
After she goes in, I immediately text her mom that she's feeling a little sick in the head, and they might check on her if it's a headache or not. After a while, I started my own way back home. I opened the gate and went in. After dinner, I went up my room and finished my usual do's and lay down in bed. Sigh. Hallie. Huh? What is it, smart? What Monica said earlier. About the poem not only being made that very day. What about it? You don't think that blonde girl we saw before was she meant, right? Was, was who she meant? You mean that early weird stalker girl? How would she be from the original timeline, exactly? Remember what Kurumi said? About the human heart being unpredictable even if it's your own? Yeah. What about that? The thing is, this isn't the first time we saw her. What? Silent said he saw her before. Silent? Yeah, normally Silent he here is supposed to talk with us now, but something's been bothering him since the beginning of all this. Which is why he's still quiet ever since. Which isn't exactly surprising entirely, given his name. Say, so I think it was this girl we saw the whole reason I made that poem, then. We're not sure, but it's just a speculation. A really huge speculation, if you ask me. But what bothers me is how exactly would she have been made from just a poem? She wouldn't have just appeared out of thin air now, would she? What if we just ask her? What? Approach her, ask her. She doesn't seem like she's bad. In fact, she seems to avoid us more than just approach us. Approaching her about it, huh? I guess that could work. We'd have to even try to get close to her without her deciding to bolt the moment you notice her. I'll think of a way to approach her in the morning. And just like that, I eventually go to a deep slumber. Pardon me. <laughs>